Hello everyone and welcome to another episode on the Family of Nine Tracks channel with me, Callum. And today, this is the first video in my updated Python tutorial videos. In this video, it's going to be setting up Python first in Python Idle and then in Eclipse, which is personally why I used to develop all my programs and stuff. It's very easy, even though it's more GUI based than just the Python Idle. So first of all, what you want to do is you want to go to your default internet browser, mine's Google Chrome, and we just want to go to uh, we're going to go to python.org, which is the main Python website. You see, we come to this website here, which we're going to go to download, which is on the left side of the screen. And you see, we've got the, all these options here that we can download. And all these older ones, which are basically 2.7.6 and before, these are all the older ones with different like code meanings and stuff. These, these ones we're not going to use. And there is actually a new Python uh, installer out now, which is 3.3.4 uh, instead of 3.3.2. This is one I'm going to be using as it has some extra features and stuff that I may have to teach you in later tutorials. So I am going to download the 64-bit uh, version, which is here. Times 86 by itself is 32-bit if you have a 32-bit operating system. You can easily check this by right-clicking on computer, go to properties, and it says here 64-bit operating system. It says 32-bit, get the uh, x86. It says 64, get the x86-64 MSI installer. I'm going to click this and see it starts downloading at the bottom of the screen. And I will be with you then when it downloads. Okay, guys, this is now uh, downloaded. Sorry. So it's going to go show in folder, and we are going to open up the installation. Now it's just a standard screen like this, so we're just going to click Run. Uh, and now I'm just going to install for all users on this system. And this is where you choose where you want to install it. So uh, I think I'll just put it there, that's fine. And you choose what you want to install, click Next. We should just keep clicking Next through the whole installation. And it will install the files pretty quickly. I'll back you when this finishes. Alright guys, that's finished. It was a bit slower than usual because I had to remove all the other files that I had on here before uh, I'm installing this new version of Python. So I'll come up with this final screen, click finish, and you've now installed the Python IDLE. You can quickly check this by just typing IDLE in the um, window search and there you go, there's your Python IDLE. It will open up. Now this is what I use quite a lot of my tutorials. I, this is what I use tutorials for, which is the idle and obviously you've got the um, new window here which where you type your code for the big programs and obviously that will work fine if you're beginning just trying to learn the starting out of the programs but if you actually want to write a large program and you want it to work seamlessly and look nice and be easy to write then you want to install something called Eclipse. Now Eclipse is a Java development platform which is used for obviously Java development in mobiles and computer systems but there is a module we can put into it called Py Develop PyDev or Py Development, and this allows you to develop Python programs within the Java development platform. So all you want to go is go to well first we need to download Java. So if you haven't got the latest version of Java, then go and download that. That is um Oracle.com I believe is the Java website. And we want to just click on downloads and download the latest Java. Now you want to go to a clips.org. Now this is the Eclipse download website. So you see we've got downloads up here on the search bar. Click on downloads. And we want to download the Eclipse standard. Now my version is 4.3.1, but it may be different at the time that you download it. But just download whatever version is right for you. And of course we've got 32 and 64 bit here. So just install whatever one you need. Now I'm just going to download this and I'll be back with you when it finishes. Okay, we're just coming up to the end of the installation now. It was actually 200 megabytes which I forgot about so it took about 5 minutes for me to download it because my internet is really, really slow. But we're coming into the last sort of stretch of the download now. And... It's downloaded. Now if you haven't got WinRAR or 7-zip or any unzipping program then please go and grab one. I think 7-zip is free and WinRAR has a 30 day trial so either way you'll be able to open this and install it. So just going to open it up in WinRAR and you see in here we have a uh, folder called Eclipse. Now I'm just going to drag this onto my desktop. 
could take a little while to extract it, but it shouldn't be too long because it's not that big of a file, really. Now it's extracted. I can close that down and see we've got Eclipse here. Now we've opened this up, this actually has the file and all the stuff inside it. So you can drag this into your program files, which I'm going to do now very quickly. <clears throat> this is my secondary hard drive, so I don't want to take any more space up on my other one. And it will copy the files over. After a little bit of effort. <laughs> And now we have the files in here as well, so we can delete this older folder. That rhymed, very good. Uh, now, see here we've got the Eclipse shortcut here, which you can drag anywhere. So, let's see, I drag it to the start menu here. So I can just show you quickly, and we're going to load up Eclipse. It's just an average run thing like this. I always untick this box because you have to run it every single time, and this box comes up every single time. So I'm just going to run this, and this is the Eclipse Kepler which is the version that I'm using but you might be using another one now here you need to set up your workspace which is basically where your folders and files are stored when you finish a project and you save it so I'm just gonna say yeah that's fine at the moment so I'm just gonna click OK obviously you can browse and choose a different folder um, if you want to use it uh, there's also a tick box here so it doesn't ask you every single time what workspace will you want to use so I'm going to click OK, so I might want to change that later. And it will load up Eclipse. Now this is Eclipse, the main screen. This is the workspace in the center. And as you see now, there's no sort of uh, Python development sort of thing here. So if I close this window down, you see this is the uh, sort of average screen. And you see up here, it's only Java development and not Python. Now we see we go to File, and we go to New and project we have not got a pydev development we can't develop in python at the moment so to change this there's a few simple steps here that you need to pay attention to because if you get this wrong you could mess up your clips and have to reinstall again so what you want to do is go to the help tab and you want to go to install new software and this is the screen that comes up to install new development platforms and stuff now you need to select a site in which you want to download all your information from now the site is and you have to put this full in http and then colon dash dash pydev dot org forward slash updates and once you've got this web address in press enter or return and it will come up with these two modules here now you only want to tick the top module and click next and it will calculate all the space it needs on the hard drive it will tell you what the module is, click next again now you want to read this license agreement which uh, you'll get to, after you've installed quite a few programs you'll get to read it quite quickly just accept the agreement press finish and it will install the software now come up with this little screen that just installs everything you can run it in the background but I'm just going to keep it up for a sec while it installs and there we go now all you need to do is make is tick this box here and trust this. This is just basically another license agreement. So press OK. And you have to restart Eclipse for it to take effect. So yes. And it will restart your Eclipse. Here, come up with a workspace box again if you haven't defaulted the workspace. And there you go. Now all I want to do to be able to develop in Python is now we go to File, New and Project. You see down right down at the bottom we have a PyDev folder now. If we open this up you've got Django which is like a um, internet based Python development. You've got App Development from Google and the last one which is a PyDev project for computers. So we want to click on the PyDev project, click Next and this is the, this is a workspace you want to be familiar with so obviously you've got your project name here so we'll just call ours test for now uh, you have these three different python project types now if you want to stick with python jpython, i and python are different things we do not want to touch them really grammar version you want to change this to 3.0 but at the moment the program doesn't have an interpreter which is something that it like reads the information from so there's a little 
the panel down here that says please configure an interpreter before proceeding. Click on this and click on manual config. Obviously you can put an auto config but I find it easy just to do manually. Now you go on this screen, all you want to pay attention to is the new new button up here. Click on new, interpreter name, I'm just going to call mine uh, Python 3.3.4 which is the version that we installed. Click on browse and I think it will be under my first hard drive uh, in here or maybe in here oh no sorry it was in here sorry uh, and I want to click on the python.exe not the python w just the python.exe double click on that click OK click OK again and you see we've got an interpreter up here I'm going to hit apply and OK and we want to select the interpreter in the uh, PyDev project screen now you can add a source folder to your projects which I don't really like to do but you can if you want to uh, I'm just going to leave it a default add project directory to Python path and you want to just click finish uh, now you want to just click remember my decision and yes for this bit and that gives you a PyDev um, tab up here so you can switch between Java development and Python development up here. Now you can change around this workspace as you notice it is different from the Java development. Uh, just by going to Window, Show View and then click on these to change. Uh, so click on Console and it brings up the console down the bottom. Now see we've got the test folder here which is what we named our um, Python development. I'm just going to open this up and you see we've got our interpreter inside. Now to make a new file or a new like workspace to make a program in, when I right click on test, go to new and then go to PyDev module. Now you've got a source folder here which you can add, a file, a folder and a package which I'll probably be talking about in later tutorials because they are very useful when you're making very large programs. So you can have different uh, code in different files and then put them together in the main code. Um, but we want to just click PyDev module and um, source folder you want to keep normal package you want to keep normal, like empty unless you are using a package and give it a name so I'll put tester click finish and it asks you which uh, of these templates would you like to use normally I would go with empty or uh, main or class depending on what, what sort of program I'm doing if I'm doing object oriented I'll go with class otherwise I'll probably go with empty so I double click on empty and it gives you this little weird comment here we can delete that and we're all ready to go so just to show you that it works fine you can type in print and you see it comes up with this little screen here which is basically what sets it apart from the um, any other sort of program it basically finishes code for you and gives you uh, suggestions on what you should put next in your piece of code that you're writing so obviously we've got print here with our two brackets already installed because it's um, the 3.0 version of Python. Click this or just press enter and it will bring up this little thing. Now if you put in one um, speech mark it will automatically put in the other one for you so you don't have to keep uh, like you don't have to put both in, it just puts it in automatically. So if I just put hello uh, world which is a simple sort of phrase everyone uses. Now the uh, run shortcut for this is control plus F11 not F5 like the um, Python ideally so we just click on this and you want to select Python run and it shouldn't ask you this ever again after you clicked it for the first time if it doesn't just Python run every time click OK it asks you which file would you like to run Pest tester.py which is the one I would like to run click OK and you see now in the console down below it says hello world which is basically the Python ideally screen It's just now a console down the bottom of the screen so that is how to install uh, Eclipse and the Python IDLE onto your computer for our latest tutorials I hope I'll be seeing you next time guys and that's it so goodbye also another thing I should mention is uh, I now have 10,000 views and nearly 150 subscribers which is absolutely brilliant thank you guys for all the support and for this, I'm going to be doing a giveaway, which is probably going to be some Steam codes I'm going to get. So today, this is the first video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up a Terraria uh, 1.2 server. 
uh, through Steam, but I think it's pretty much the same if you buy the game out of Steam. It's just a different path to get to the installation folder. 